Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching the presentation. I'm going to talk about my PhD project, which is uh, reconstruction of neuron microscopy images. Uh, well, at the beginning, this is for a start. This is going to be more like an engineering presentation. So I'm, I'm yeah, I hope you're gonna. <laughs> it's going to be valuable for you to hear about it. So the the neurons. Uh, resemble, as you all know, the tree-like structures, and within this, oh, the light, uh, within this very, very simplified model, you can see that it's uh, really like some tree-like structure, and I'm, what I'm gonna, uh, uh, what we all know, that is this morphology of the tree structure is uh, influencing a lot uh, on how the neural system actually works. And uh, it's connected with the functionality, it's connected with uh, uh, simply how the, the branches connect with each other. Now, within that kind of structure, uh, you have, we've got uh, points like the ones that I marked throughout the whole presentation with red and yellow. And, and those are endpoints and junctions. Endpoints in uh, yellow and uh, reddish are these uh, junctions or bifurcations. So I'm, I'm actually going to talk about the detection of these kind of points in, uh, ele in um, not electron, in uh, microscope images. So this is how the image looks like. Uh, that's what biologists use, cell biologists. It's a uh, uh, wide field, it's a um, light microscopy image, and the, the anno annotated uh, critical points are shown on the image. Now, uh, each of them is associated with uh, some kind of a spherical region. And uh, basically what happens with the uh, image processing in this case is that the algorithms for detecting the linear structures are kind of already there and standardized. But what happens in these points is that the space breaks and then there's a lack of methodology that deals with these uh, critical locations. And also tips are very important with the uh, automatic neural reconstruction. So I'm going to talk about the methodology, how to make a computer, basically a computer program that would automatically detect that. And uh, we have a model of, uh, yeah, that's how we uh, tried to draw it. Uh, what we're in, we're going to take, uh, for each location, we're going to take the neighborhood of each location and see what happens inside and wh what's going on with the uh, pixel intensities within this region. And um, we're going to look for uh, patterns which uh, will yeah, that's how it's most intuitive to describe it. So uh, for bifurcations, uh, we're going to look for uh, three uh, kind of streamlines that spread out from the center of the region. And for endpoints, we're going to look for one of them. And at the same time, it's also equally important to detect that there's nothing in the reminder of the region. So the, the program, the algorithm is supposed to capture these kind of patterns and just uh, show them. Uh, for that, we use standardized kind of procedure in image analysis. So uh, feature selection, feature extraction, and uh, in the end, the detection. Uh, for the start, the first module is directional filtering, some kind of a basic module where you take the locations of interest. I've noted a couple of them which are very important, and then apply a set of oriented uh, kernels with Gaussian weights. And uh, with that, you get something what we call the angular profiles, which are basically a unique signature description of each location in the image. Now, starting with that, we extract a set of features which will correspond to each of the location. Uh, starting from the angular profile, uh, optimization procedure will get detected at three angles, up to four, actually. Uh, but in this case, there are three. And the first feature will be called likelihood, which is just the value of the angular profile at that particular direction. Uh, we call them uh, angles alpha, one, two, and three. Uh, then now that we narrow down the search space, we can uh, extract the patches, the same ones that we used in directional filtering in terms of size, and try to find the patch correlation between uh, each of these with, uh, again, a Gaussian model prof uh, patch with the Gaussian profile in the cross-section. And we use that because the, actually when you do a microscopy, the cross-section of a neuron is modeled with the Gaussian intensity. Uh, the last feature uh, is called bending energy. So within the patches, uh, refine the set of points. So try to follow a bit how, it, how, it, uh, how the neuron goes. 
and yeah, it's it's basically smoothing. So the higher it is, uh, the the less smooth the the lines are. So those three features will be extracted to all the detected directions. And uh, the next stage would be how to blend those features together. And and for that, uh, we'll use a uh, fuzzy logic rule-based system. And fuzzy logic is something that's been an uh, old concept since the 60s used in control systems. In, in this case, it's gonna, uh, I tried to explain it in a really, really quick way as is some kind of a controller which gets an input and fuzzifies that input in terms of some linguistic variable and then applies a set of rules which are if then rules kind of expert uh, rules. And then the output is also, uh, again, another uh, a linguistic variable, and with the process of defazification, we can get the output. So here's a, just an example of a controller which will take an input, fuzzify it, apply a set of rules, and uh, each of the rules will be uh, accurate to some degree, and they will accumulate both together, and with defazification, we can get the output. So this is some kind of a very, very simple controller, and uh, uh, one input, one output, and uh, yeah, it's very important to, when you design the rules, that they complement each other very well. Uh, so how does it relate to this kind of problem? Uh, well, you detect the features per each of the streamlines, uh, L, C, and U, as marked in one of the previous slides. And then you quantify them in terms of uh, uh, linguistic terms, so to say. So each of them is either high or low to some degree. And then you apply a set of rules which I'm not say, telling here, but they're actually the core of the algorithm. And then each of these streamlines is expressed in some kind of a fuzzy way, uh, saying how much it is on, off, or I don't know, uh, which means none. And then uh, there's another fuzzy logic system concatenated on top of that, which takes uh, all the possible streamlines. And uh, what we will have at the, imp uh, at the output for each pixel location of interest, we will have some kind of a fuzzy output saying uh, the degree of belief that our point is junction, nothing, or, or an end point. Uh, that's in a nutshell. So the, the nice thing about fuzzy logic is that it models uncertainty and you can apply some set of nonlinear rules and, and it, it does basically information fusion in this case. Uh, I evaluated the, the algorithm. The evaluation will uh, be using uh, basically, it's going to use uh, the uh, yeah, hit or miss. Uh, we will have a ground truth and we'll count the hits and miss. Uh, true positives, false positives, false negatives. Uh, with those, we have a precision and recall and F measure uh, per each image. In the end, we sum up all that uh, in three measures. So, uh, F score for junction, F score for endpoints, and the F score that combines both of those. Uh, the data sets synthetic and the real data sets. Synthetic data sets are uh, neurons taken from uh, available uh, internet uh, database, neuromorpho.org. Uh, different levels of signal to noise ratio, and these are how, this how the, the images look with annotations. And the real images, there's 19 of them manually annotated with different range of critical points per image. Uh, those are the results, the scores. So the F scores, if we're looking just at the junction detection, uh, that you can see how the detection goes per each of the image. And in this case, we just care about junction detection and don't care about endpoint detection. Here we just endpoint, and here we combine both of them at one go, so take the best score. And this was all for a signal-to-noise ratio of four, which is actually a high signal-to-noise ratio. So. Uh, if we look at the performance of the detection per signal-to-noise ratio, it's uh, obvious that it's substantially higher for signal-to-noise ratio 3, but we can roughly expect to have something around 90% as it looks there. For real data, things are not as bright as for synthetic, so uh, again, the same process. The, the F scores, uh, junction detection, endpoint detection, and combined. But in this case, we got uh, we're around 80 percent, 78 percent for the for all for this group of uh, 14, I think, images. So there's a drop of 10 percent with real data, which is probably, of course, because real data are not as, as good as synthetic data, and it's harder to tackle. And synthetic data cannot model all the variability that there exists in real life. Uh, yeah, this is just a visualization how it looks in 
visually, and yeah, there, are, there are cases when it misses, cases when it's okay. Uh, in general, it captures the topology of the neuron. Uh, so to summarize, uh, this is um, I'm presented a kind of a novel method for detection of critical points in neuron images, and uh, it's been extended to detection of endpoints, so tips of the neuron branches. And there's uh, another scheme which uses uh, generated synthetic neuron images which have uh, already given ground truth, because this ground truth has a problem. I, I'm, well, I, we have a lot of a lack of standardized ground truth. And as for the future work, uh, there's algorithm can be extended to 3D compared with other algorithms and used for the neuron reconstruction for tracing. With that, I'd like to conclude the presentation. And yeah, these are thanks to my colleagues from Erasmus MC. And if you have any questions, um, I'd, I'd answer. Thank you. Um, the real data that you were using was this just um, Cell culture based data in uh, 2D from a wide field microscope, or did you also use slice data or confocal or 2D, scans? 2D. Uh, if biologists use, they just uh, usually they have a sample in 2D. Of course, 3D is, is indeed necessary, but experiments can be carried out with 2D as well. But, but also, where your sample comes from, is that cell culture or tissue? Cell. Uh, how no, the, your system has a lot of parameters, including the kernels of the Gaussian filters and all the of the fuzzy logic system. I'm not allowing them too much. So there are five parameters altogether. Five. Uh, the crucial parameter is the size of the kernel, but you can apply also several sizes. Uh, the rest of the parameters, fuzzy logic and stuff, the rest of the stuff I. I don't really want user to change. But you said so I want them uh, to be. I want them to be constrained. So uh, if it's uh, uh, NCC score, then it's it's between minus one and one. So if it's low, you just set it to zero point five and don't care. But when you set up the system, you set up the membership functions, the thresholds of the membership functions, and so on. Uh, there, no, that does not really, these sigmas are not so much of a, they don't make so much impact, I think. I know. Okay. No, 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 I think so, yeah, but in this case they're like 0 0.4, so as long as you separate the categories, it's okay. And are the same for the synthetic and for the uh, uh, natural images? Uh, you use the same set of parameters for yeah, the Yeah, well, well I was uh, going through a grid of parameters, basically, for these experiments, and choosing the ones that were good. 